I would highly suggest um, the formatting of the fill at the beginning is like you just say what classes you're thinking about taking and then you say like what it'll equate over here. And I would highly suggest getting like 20, almost maybe even 30 classes just because it helps you so much if like two classes clash, you can easily find another one. And you can still email Tacy later on, but it's a lot easier if you already have a list. And a lot of them are just going to be electives, but it really helps out. I did that, and there was two classes that clashed, and I was easily able to switch over to another one because I already had it. So, for example, uh, my friend Julie and I, uh, we decided we wanted to take a sustainable energy course that was in the Department of Mechanical Engineering when we got there. And so we emailed Tacy. <laughs> And we sorted it out, and it ended up counting as tech collective credit. Um, this, I think that only applies to chemical engineers. Uh, but it was one of the best classes I've ever taken um, to learn about sustainable energy from an engineering perspective. Um, and the same professor who taught that class also taught our fluid mechanics course. Um, and he was awesome and had this great Scottish accent. They help you so much with your adjustment to a new school system. You definitely feel like a freshman again, which is pretty funny, like learning about their online homework system and all that stuff. Um, but you're given a personal tutor. So that's actually a professor in the department that you're in. So I had a professor in the Department of Chemical Engineering meet with me one-on-one -on -one to confirm all of my classes. And he went as far as to say, you know, if you're feeling stressed out about this transition, please come and talk to me. You know, I can reference you to counseling services if this is too much. Like, was just so, so, so welcoming and caring and continued to check up with me. Um, I had multiple meetings with him throughout the semester. So, I mean, that's just one example of what they do to make sure that you're able to adjust as easily as possible. Like Jess mentioned, you get a personal tutor in Edinburgh, which is really amazing. You have, like, a professor in your department, probably not someone that you're taking class with, but they're able to advise you on classes and since they're like have the same pretty much technical background as you, you can say, well, okay, I've taken classes in like data structures and algorithms. Do you think this fourth year course, which sort of can equate to a master's level um, in the UK, do you think I'd be able to handle that? And they'll give you your advice and you can sort of make your own decision whether you want to take that class or not. Another thing is if you have any issues with your classes, you can just go straight to them and they will help you sort anything out. So I was in Amsterdam for a weekend and my flight got canceled and I was like, well, I'm not at, I don't have my laptop, I'm not at school, like I have an assignment to do the next day, what am I supposed to do? So I just emailed my tutor from my phone, I was like, I'm stuck, I have nothing to do. And he went to my professor and went to the head of the department and gave, got me an extension for when I finally got back to the UK. I could turn in my assignment, which was really nice and kind of relieves a lot of pressure having to go talk to like your professor in person. and. I have nothing figured out until you're back and past the deadline. Um, so this is a picture of King's buildings. This is one of the engineering buildings. They all look like they're straight out of a Harry Potter film, I would say. Like all of Edinburgh looks like it's out of a Harry Potter film. J.K. Rowling went to the University of Edinburgh. For example, like one of the main campus areas is called Potter Row. And that was around way before she wrote the book. So yeah, lots of cool Harry Potter fun facts if you go to Scotland. Just to give you an example, the University of Edinburgh um, was made in the 1500s, and Darwin went there. And so it's just like, oh, it's older than the United States. Casual. One thing that really stuck out to me about the academic culture there is you have so much like fewer assignments, and you spend a lot less of your day-to-day -day time doing homework assignments for your four or five different classes that you're taking. At least in computer science, that's how it was. Um, you would have a few projects due every few weeks, similar to here, but you didn't have like nightly or kind of daily homework that you have to turn in. It kind of leaves you with a lot more time on your hands during the day, which was nice to be able to go explore Edinburgh with or kind of just get to know more people and be able to go out and do more things. Um, on the flip side, your exams are worth like a significant portion of your grade. So I had a couple of classes where your grade is 80% your final exam, which makes it kind of scary towards the end of the year when you're sitting there studying for finals. But they also give you an actual dead week, which is about a week and a half or two of no classes, no review sessions, nothing for you to just go out, sit there, study, and review the material, especially for a semester class when you're going over like, a fair amount of information, but not too much. That's really helpful, and you're able to get everything done and do fine. And you also have an opportunity to take not just engineering courses when you're abroad. So um, one of my favorite classes, another one of my favorite classes that I took there, 
class called Our Changing World. Um, and it was an occurrence events class where every week they had a different lecturer come in and talk about um, a world a topic, a world issue, whether that be obesity, pandemic, or the driverless cars. Um, and then the next day, we would have a two-hour discussion with a group of eight different people. And that was led by a teaching assistant. So this is our class. So what was so cool about that is just that class was everyone was from such different places. And they all were at the University of Edinburgh. We got together and we talked about these crazy world issues. And the different perspectives that you get to hear about that, you know, as much as I love UCSB, we are like 90% from California. So it's kind of one of the most incredible things that you get from studying abroad is a global perspective. You know, UCSB, it is such a cool culture, but it's definitely kind of a bubble. I don't know if you felt that way, but I've definitely felt that way at some times. Um, and I absolutely love this place. But going abroad, you get to experience or hear about what it's like for people in com from completely different places and from completely different perspectives. <coughs> Edinburgh, they have really awesome societies that you can join. So there's um, the, like I joined a squash club or society, and that was really cool to learn how to play squash. I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but it's like rac racquetball. Um, it's much more common in Europe. Um, but there's also a society that you, you can join that, um, goes hiking, goes on hiking trips, it's a lot like uh, the excursion club here, but um, kind of cooler because you travel more around Scotland, and I know the ski club there like actually goes to Switzerland, just a lot of opportunities. 